eBay to go do it, it seems fine. But when you put it and as an accessible part of the main game, and you, it's you like it acknowledge it, right? Yeah. yeah, it does encourages it. it. It does encourage it, and it it encourages it for people who might be kind of new to the experience, and it seems bad. I wonder if they looked at it like this, where they I, I doubt it because big companies dealing in billions of dollars don't usually look at stuff like this. Where they looked at it as, okay, this is horrible. This <laughs> this this ruins the game for people because. You know, you can just pay to get whatever you want. And they're sitting there going, okay, what is the cost of preventing that? And they probably looked at it as there's no way to prevent that. Because if you prevent it, then you're preventing people from trading items, which is kind of a nice part of the game. So in that way, you would sort of ruin the game. So in that respect, they're like, well, then we might as well embrace what's going to happen anyway. It's, it's, yeah. it's, Isn't that like saying, okay, well, there's going to be extortion, so I'm going to be a mob boss. I mean, and just to clarify, apparently, chat room is informing me, uh, Diablo 3, you can use your actual in-game gold, or you can use real cash. It's an option. You don't have to, but it's there, and I think it still has the same result. Mm. All right. If, I don't like it. I'll, I'll, I'll go on record saying I don't like that aspect, but it's not going to stop me from playing Diablo. But <laughs> Okay. That, 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 that's yeah, happening. See, that's the thing. It's not going to stop you from playing Diablo. You're actually going to play the game. I'm actually going to play the game. I'm going to get my items through doing shit. I'm not going to get my items through buying stuff. So, I right. mean, being, and, and in that way, it's, it's still a very fulfilling game. It's something I've been, like, thinking about a lot lately, because I just recently bought an iPad for uh, Super Meat Boy the game, mm -hmm. and that device is purely a consumer device like i was looking through just trying to see if there was any sort of real productivity software other than just emailing people no <laughs> there's no. nothing it's totally a surface level it's it's a surface level like device that you just put money into and you you get limited fulfillment out of like it's it's cool for me because i watch netflix while i'm going to sleep but it's not like it's for social like, interaction purely yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a four hundred dollar Facebook and Twitter machine. <laughs> yeah, and you can download these little apps and stuff on it, but the fulfillment that I actually get out of it isn't isn't that great. Um, but there is something to it. There is something very convenient to having this mm -hmm. this very easily you know accessible device in front of you that you can get basically anything on. So I think in that way, and I hope I, and and going back to why like not doing a sequel and why we sort of decided to do this Super Meat Boy the game kind of thing. Uh, I think in a way, I, at least for me recently, you know, just with what I've been thinking, it's a challenge in a way to bring something very fulfilling, like bring a full realized game to the platform that is built for the platform. I know there's other games, there's other games like Infinity Blade and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. those kinds of games are very, very limited as to like not not those kind of I mean games in general on the app store are very limited to like engaging a user and being something other than a time waster. Because yeah. when you go upstairs and you play like any game, like a, you go upstairs and you play Skyrim or something on your on your TV, it's it's a more fulfilling experience than sitting on the toilet and playing. <laughs> which I do. And I enjoy play Minesweeper, but I'm not really getting anything. It's just something to do so I can ignore the smell of my own feces. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. But it would be... It's, it's weird because I've just been thinking about it a lot, and these kinds of devices are the future, but it also makes me a little scared about the future because this device turns people that are using it 100% into consumers because there is no outlet on it to actually really create anything other than photos that you can share with people so mm -hmm. I, don't know, I, ho I hope in the future stuff changes there because i'd i'd like these things to be like the computers on minority report you know yeah where you're like doing everything you can and there's these crazy innovative touch uh touch interfaces and stuff that actually are better than what we're currently used to i, I want it to be a step up and for what it is right now it does seem kind of like a step it doesn't seem like a step it seems like a wall and it seems like a wall where we're just we just have these devices and we just look at them. We buy these little apps. People buy these games where they they run through a stage once, they're bored of it, and then they buy a five dollar gun so they can run through <laughs> a stage again and then be bored of it again. I you know I 
I want something more from these because it's the future, but I think it, it's kind of up to current developers to make it into the future that it, it, we want it to be and it's, instead of like trying to fight it in a way. Speaking like of that, instead of fight. do you have a general release for your iOS game, like a general idea when that might come out? Before yeah. Monaco. Before Monaco. <laughs> yeah. Before Monaco. <laughs> our, goal, our goal is to come out before Monaco. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll hit it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we'll do it. All right, let's talk about the Binding of Isaac now, if you could. And I read your description of that, some of the controversy or lack thereof, I guess you could say about that. And when I think of the, you know, the phrase, the Binding of Isaac, I basically think of Abraham almost sacrificing his son on an altar. But in this, we have Isaac crying deadly tears and facing down mother. So can you share the story on this and I guess how it evolved from that original tale? Yeah, well, the story is based on the story of the Binding of Isaac. If it was, if it happened now, um, and uh, you know the mother, the father is a mother, a single parent mm. mother. So she hears the voice of God, and the voice of God tells her to you know prove her, prove her love by sacrificing her only son. Um, so she tries to do so, and Isaac. Um, escapes into the basement and ends up fighting her um, in the end with his tears. Okay. Um, and the, the whole game was based on The Legend of Zelda in the same way that Meepo is based on Mario. Um, the Binding of Isaac was a retelling, my retelling of The Legend of Zelda and, you know, doing that in kind of an abstract way, like, you know, one night I'm playing Legend of Zelda. Tommy, I, and I think Tommy was still down. He was about ready to go on vacation. Because Tommy wasn't, and just to put this on the table, Tommy wasn't I the know. programmer of the Binding of Isaac. Unfortunately. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he wanted to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I, I didn't want to go to Hawaii. I didn't like it. You could have just come over to my house. You could have broken up with her earlier and just come over to my house and stayed, and we could have made the game. That, that's what I should have done. Like, literally, that's what I should have done. Mm. It would have saved me a ton of grief. But, <laughs> oh well. But, yeah, so, quite literally, I'm playing. I wanted to do a, a game jam because I wanted to take a break, um, like, and relax. And to me, making games is very relaxing, and being creative is very relaxing for me. And um, I actually get very stressed out when it comes to vacations, I have anxiety about that sort of stuff too. So Tommy took a vacation to relax, which turned out not to be true. And uh, I took a vacation to do a game jam game with um, a program that I worked with in the past. His name was Florian. Um, and uh, we didn't know what we were going to do. And I was playing The Legend of Zelda and the, the original. And I noticed that the structure of the dungeons could very easily be turned into a roguelike formula. Like, it just seemed to all fit into place really, really easily. Explain then, to me what that means, roguelike formula. So, the ro ro uh, basically, usually roguelikes are randomly generated RPGs, okay. um, usually turn-based, turn um, where your character is kind of going around and fighting randomly generated monsters, randomly generated loot, um, and leveling up, getting more powerful, and traveling downward in, in, into a dungeon until you I fight, see. like, mega boss or whatever. And some of them actually have you leave after that too but it's 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 fo it's a it's a focus on like random level generation random enemy generation random item generation that sort of stuff too everything you, different so every time every time you play it's completely new and completely fresh experience mm -hmm. and i could see that this, the, the level the way the levels were kind of mapped out in in, um, in zelda for the dungeons could be randomized and then i thought you know well i could you know every 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 level every dungeon in zelda has like one power-up item and one boss, and the boss usually gives you like a container heart, so I could take that formula as well, randomize that, and then I thought, okay, I could turn it into a shooter because I didn't want to do a literal, you know, a, you know, melee combat sort of deal. I thought a shooter would be fun to do and give me more variables to play with when it came to items and, and that sort of stuff. And then, um, and then I just kind of built on it from there. And uh, the basic theme came from... Originally, the game was called Love Sick, and oh. um, it was um, it was it didn't it wasn't biblical yet. I didn't put the two together, but it was based on like Miyamoto always said that 
Legend of Zelda was based on him like taking adventures as a kid and turning over rocks and kind of exploring forests and kind of the mysteries of the unknown. And that always, you know, felt I, I could it felt like my story in a lot of ways. And I wanted to kind of t retell it in, in my way, but kind of more like the, the darker, dangerous side of of being a creative kid that goes and explores by himself, the loneliness, like the kind of sadness and isolation um, that would go along with um, a kid who would enjoy doing that sort of stuff by himself and taking adventures by himself and stuff like that. So that's what I originally, how it originally started. And um, I was trying to figure out a name for the game because I didn't like Lovesick. And uh, I was searching online for, I wanted to find something that looked like the Legend of Zelda, like something of something. And um, I don't know how I came across it. I think I started looking up religious stuff because, you know, in my my childhood growing up, I had a lot of religion, like a lot of dogma coming from all angles. And, um, and I grew up Catholic, and then my dad was born again Christian. So there's a lot of like hardcore you know, you play D and D, you're going to hell, sort, uh. of, sort of stuff. Growing up, so I started touching on that and searching religious stuff, and I just saw the title, "The Binding of Isaac," and I thought, "Oh, that's a really cool title. It sounds like The Legend of Zelda." And then I started looking more into it and thinking, like, how perfect it would fit into this existing story that I already had going, and and then it just kind of molded together, and all the religious stuff just poured in and. It's just usually when I'm designing something, I'm designing on the fly and I'm letting every, all the doors are left open and I just, whatever walks through, I take if it works and I don't usually question it that much. And it just kind of became a, an improvisational design. Um, and I just went from there. I didn't really think much about it and we developed it over the course of like three and a half months and just released it as it was. And that's basically it. There's a lot of excitement about the upcoming expansion on May 28th called The Wrath of the Lamb, especially on the wiki. And for $3, you get six new rooms, is it 10 bosses, trinkets, and an extra ending. And now for someone like me who thinks that the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who are the scariest thing ever, and I hear that there's a Weeping Angels sound, and who also hates spiders, this kind of disturbs me. <laughs> Can you tell us more what we might be looking forward to in the expansion? Um, the expansion is quite literally just more of everything. Um, I, I wanted to add more mystery, more items, more everything, more discovery. Um, it has a, a deeper focus on just more depth, um, more, just more of everything really. And, um, and it, it does, the ending um, touches on an aspect of the story that hasn't been explored that I've seen that, that I always had th had been thinking about when making the game um, that might change people's perspectives on exactly what is going on in the game. Um, but in, in, you know, it's also semi vague, so it won't it won't definitely you know solidify a lot of theories. But um, yeah, it's just it's an expansion. It's a shitload of the same stuff. Um, it's the closest thing to fanfare I've ever come when it comes to people really wanting more and me giving more. Mm -hmm. I usually don't do this, but um, I, I kind of wanted to do this for Danielle because she um, had 100% of the game, and I and I really enjoyed watching her play it. It was it was pretty. Um, I was I was definitely writing off of her enjoyment of the game and, and Tommy's as well. Tommy was actually living with me when we were finishing up, and watching them both play kind of made me really want to do more and more and more. Um, because it's it's very fun to watch Let's Plays and watch Danielle play and Tommy play and, 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 and kind of see them discover things and want to add more um, to it. But this is it, though. I'm fucking done. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sick of Isaac right now, and I really want to work on um, Meat Boy, uh, and I'd like to throw myself in. I started working on Meat Boy a lot. Um, I just, there was like kind of like a windfall of, of ideas and inspiration for like the look and feel of the game, and then suddenly I'm like, oh my god, I have to fucking finish this Isaac expansion. <sighs> and, uh, I, and I just want it to be done so I can work more on Meat Boy because I can't... I have a very hard time. They're just two different sides of my brain or something right now, and I, I can't... It's one or the other, so I need to finish this completely and so I can work full-time on, on Meat Boy. Um, and uh, that's basically what I've been doing for the past couple months. 
Okay, well, I have some questions. 